Okay, things are looking a little better. Yesterday, when I did the full sessions, the file was too big for the server to upload to Moodle. So I've decided to break it down into two sections. I've already posted your section one point two. I think it lasted about 30 minutes, and this one will probably be a little bit shorter than that. 1.3 is really starting off by talking about complex numbers. A complex number is a number that is written in the form of A plus BI. We need to talk about where the I came from. The square root of minus one, there is no such thing. So many, many moons ago, some mathematician decided that we're going to call the square root of minus one I. That's a definition. Now, taking that definition, we can do many, many things. For instance, the square root of minus nine, since the square root of nine is three, and the square root of the negative is I, so the square root of minus nine is going to be three I. The square root of any negative number is going to have that I. A cute little thing that happens is this. You take our definition and you square both sides. Well, when you square a square root, it removes the square root. So when I square this side, I get minus one. And when I square this side, I get I squared. This is something you need to put in your notes, you need to put in your brain. Every time you have an I squared in a problem, you can replace it with a minus one. And we're going to see that with some of the examples that we've got. So. A complex number is a number that's written in this form, A plus BI. In this case, the A is called the real number part, and the two is called the imaginary number part. Now, these complex numbers, we can do the same thing we uh, did with real numbers. Three plus I is a complex number, and three plus four I is a second one. So let's follow it. The first term is going to give me nine. The outside terms are going to give me 12i. The inside product is going to give me 3i. And the last term is i times 4i, which is going to give me 4i squared. Well, we collect terms. I got 9 plus 15i. And look at this minus 4. It's 4i squared, but i squared is minus 1. So you got minus 1 times 4, which is minus 4. So the nine minus four is going to give me five plus 15i. So we have followed this mess. We ended up with a complex number in the correct form. It's in the A plus BI form. Of course, complex is going to make you write all your answers in that form when they have the I in it. And don't fall for the trap. Be sure and work the problem that he's called for. Here I've got three plus two i plus six plus five i. It simply means that I'm adding these two together. I'm not multiplying. So three plus six is going to give me nine. Two i plus five i is seven i. We're through with it, and that's it. In your homework, you have a discussion on rational and irrational numbers. A rational number is any number that can be expressed as a quotient of two whole numbers. And notice I didn't just say it can be expressed as a fraction. The square root of five divided by the square root of seven would be a fraction, but it's certainly not rational. Square root of nine is rational because the square root of nine comes out to be the whole number three. The square root of nine over 25 is still rational because it's three divided by five. But the square root of five is irrational. If you hit it on your calculator, it'll probably run you out to about seven or eight decimal places. There are some computer programs that are running out to 100 decimal places. It never repeats. It never terminates. It is a right irrational number. Another big irrational number that all of you are familiar with is pi. Pi is 3.14159 out to five decimal places. It never repeats. It never terminates. In fact, pi is so mysterious that they've written books about it. Let's go back to a concept that we had in the fourth grade. If I multiply any number by one, I still get that number. So eight times one is still eight. But if I choose to change it and multiply it by three over three, three over three is still one. So 
this one times eight is going to be equivalent to what I had. But from the fourth grade, eight times three is 24, one times three is three. So 24 divided by three is a new expression, but it's still going to be equal to that eight that we had to start with. Okay, this is a big word here. You English scholars conjugate. It's a little bit different than what we're using in math. The conjugate of a number, I'm going to look at the number 3 plus square root of 5. Its conjugate is 3 minus the square root of 5. Now, I want you to notice, I didn't change both of these signs. I only changed this one. So if I give you 4 minus 5i, its conjugate is going to be 4 plus 5i. Please, all you do is change this second sign. Now, the problem that you have, this is the original problem. 2 divided by 3 plus the square root of 5. They don't want you to leave a square root in the denominator. So they do something that they call rationalize a denominator. And you do that by multiplying by the conjugate. Let me say that one more time. When you have a square root in the bottom, if you multiply the top and bottom by its conjugate, the bottom number will end up to be a rational number, and that's the reason they call it rationalizing the denominator. So in the top, I distribute, and I get 6 plus minus 2 times square root of 5. In the bottom, we fold it. 3 and 3 is 9. Outside is minus 3 square root of 5. Inside is plus 3 square root of 5. Plus times the minus is minus the square root of 25. Now watch what happens. These two cancel out, and they'll do that every time, and that's the reason we're multiplying by the conjugate. So I've got 6 minus 2 square root of 5. On the bottom, I got 9 minus 5, which is 4. So we only have one more step. Of course, compass is not going to let you leave it in that form. He wants it in reduced form. So to divide everything by 2, and I get 3 minus square root of 5, the whole mess, divided by 2. Notice, our denominator doesn't have a square root left in it, and that's the reason they call it rationalizing the denominator. Now, get ready for one like this, because I'm sure you're going to have it on homework. I know you also have it on the quiz. You also have it on the first test. Our original problem is 2 plus i divided by 5 minus i. Well, keep in mind, i is the square root of minus 1. So I have a square root in the denominator. It says we're not going to leave a square root in the denominator. The conjugate of 5 minus i is 5 plus i. So I'm going to apply the top and the bottom by the conjugate. We distribute the top and we get 10. Outside is 2i. Inside is 5i. And last term is i times i is i squared. On the bottom, I left off the step. I'm not going to have a middle term because the outside is 5i, the inside is minus 5i. They're always going to subtract out. So I got 25 minus i squared. We do a little bit of arithmetic with it. The i squared here is minus 1. So on the top, I got 9 plus 7i. On the bottom, and look at this carefully. I got i squared, which is negative 1. Negative times a negative gives me positive 1. Therefore, I got 26. Now, and this is crucial. Of course, compass is going to make you write every complex number in this form, a plus bi. So in this problem right here, the a is 9 over 26, and the b is 7 over 26. You must write it in this form in order for them to give you credit. Okay, all those quadratics that we solved in section 1.2, they came out with nice little real numbers. But watch what happened in this one. Using our quadratic, standard quadratic, A is 1, B is 2, and C is 3, uh, 8. Now we plug in. So I got minus B. B squared is 4. Minus 4 times 1 times 8 is minus 32 divided by 2 times 1. Same song and dance that we had a while ago. 
28 you have to bust up. I wish I'd have used a different number. It's not going to come out four every time. But in this case, it did because four times seven is 28. Now, the square root of this four is two. I had a seven left in there, but I hope you can see this. This is two i, and the i comes from the fact that it is a negative underneath the radical. Now, this is important. All of these have a factor of two, so I divide by two, two, two. So my answer is minus one plus or minus the square root of seven times i. And one more time, of course, compass is not going to accept it in this form. You're going to have to split it like this, minus one plus the square root of seven i, and minus one minus the square root of seven times i. Okay. We can use this mess to solve some higher degree equations, and, and I know you've got one like this on the test. I want you to notice this is a fourth degree equation. It's x squared, x to the fourth plus 17 x squared plus 16. Now, this will factor because x squared times x squared gives me that x to the fourth. Outside product would give me, in this particular case, one x squared. Inside product would give me 16x squared, but 16 and 1 gives me 17x squared. So we've got it factored properly. Now we go back to use that little law that we talked about. This has to be equal to 0, and this has to be equal to 0. Our square root method works great here. You bring the 16 over, you take the square root of both sides. And then the square root of minus 16 is plus or minus 4i. Over here, you got the square root of minus 1, and it's plus or minus i. Let's do another one that works in, in the same vein as this right here. All right. You can certainly see that I'm making very special cases. We're fixing them so that we know that they're going to factor. Well, the factors of x to the fourth are x squared and x squared. The factors of 36 that we're going to use is 36 and 1 because I can get my 35 from that. Now, one more time. The middle sign was negative, so the biggest product has to be negative. The tail end number is negative, so the signs have to alternate. So watch what happens when we work this mess out. I got x squared minus 36 is 0. And x squared plus 1 is 0. Well, we just worked that right here. We know the two answers are going to be plus or minus i. But watch how convenient this is right here. I got x squared is 36. I take the square root of both sides. So x is plus or minus 6. So hopefully. This new method is going to work. I, I can do one section, make it in about 30 or 35 minutes, and I think that it will upload properly. So I hope you take the opportunity to look at this stuff. If you're going to do the uh, videos, you can review them anytime as you wish to. But uh, if you're good enough with Course Compass and just viewing the, his examples and working it out, that's great with me. In fact, I've seen some of you that's already got section one, two, three, and you made in the 90s and 100% on it, and that's great. Good luck.